would love to start with your background. We actually, so we were supposed to have Phil Shen um, with us today on the panel. He yeah. couldn't make it, so I'm afraid you have to step in for both and kind of try to represent both HTC Exodus and Opera. Um, I'm sure you'll do that brilliantly. But we'd love to start with your personal background. What made you go into the space? What's your kind of crypto passion? Why is it that you're trying to push this through um, with Opera? Sure. Um, so yeah, I'm leading all the crypto efforts at Opera, but that really started about a year ago. Um, you know, it came really from a personal interest into crypto that you know I saw. Uh, I was really spending all my personal time in this technology, and uh, I really saw about in uh, yeah, late 2017 really that mm -hmm. um, like a common problem with wallets um, and really what what a browser, what the role of a browser could be in in this um, in this ter new term back then of Web3 and um, and decentralized networks. Um, so I really started to you know, pitch this idea internally. And um, of course, we're a bit special because we've been around for a while. We were one of the kind of original internet brands. Um, most, most people are, uh, have used our product at some point, but we're not a crypto native company like most of the companies in this space. So we, we're a different type of company, um, but we've always um, you know, played a role in defining the web, what the web should be, what a browser should be, um, and adding things to the browser that you know so, so other products didn't have. And at some point, we even have a BitTorrent client. We had an email, so we've already been, uh, we've always been trying to differentiate ourselves. So this fit into that that existing model of wanting to differentiate ourselves. Um, and now what we see is, as um, you know, the speaker from Casa put it. Uh, you know, this, this new Web3, this new computing model, it's like a new layer on the existing web. It's not a completely different internet, but um, there needs to be some software to, to support that, that to new window. layer. Yeah. Absolutely, there needs to be a window between the two worlds and hopefully Opera yeah. will help and us Yeah, and we think that the that. browser is really the thing that sits in the middle uh, between the user and, and, and the networks. And it really has the widest possible uh, use cases you know, mm -hmm. for content, for f services, for games. Uh, you name it. Right? We we think Definitely. that by hooking into a, a known app, a familiar app, uh, something that people use every day, that's really how we're gonna, uh, you know, shift the needle and really talk about mass adoption. Absolutely. I mean, we heard some of the projects um, here today talk about what they're trying to solve <coughs> in the adoption space. What do you think is kind of really the core challenge, the core um, you know, roadblocks that we have today in, in having the space sort of you know, go to the masses and, mm -hmm. and get people to use it? What mm -hmm. would you say are the top three um, problems that are happening in the space? Well, the first one is, is clearly, um, I would say, the wallets themselves, because yeah. all the wallets are uh, themselves uh, quite basic, right? They just handle a key pair and they're, they're disconnected from any applications of crypto, right? You have this interface, which is basically a QR code uh, or a copy paste, and they're really decoupled from that. Um, so you've started seeing a trend in, a, in the last year or so of you know, wallets that, that see this and try to build a browser in them to, to fill that gap uh, and to remove the friction of, of using that, uh, these technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, so we take the other way around, where we start with a browser and adding a wallet on top, which is a much simpler piece of software. Um, and we know from experience it's really hard to make a, a good browser. Um, so that's the first part, is really the, the friction of actually being able to, to transact. Um, and you know, part of that is also distribution, uh, is that mm -hmm. you know, a lot of developers in this space, they, they're so much into this that they think that installing MetaMask is actually a, uh, and nothing against MetaMask, it's a great <laughs> tool, but it's no, if for, for normal people outside of our crypto world, it's, it's a non-starter. Um, so this thing needs to be baked in, just as, you know, a few years ago we, we were saying, oh, we're a browser, we support HTML5, and, you know, that was a thing. Uh, now nobody talks about, you know, browsers supporting HTML5, it's just mm -hmm. baked in, people expect that it's there. Uh, and we expect that this is going to repeat itself now with Web3, with uh, decentralized networks like uh, smart contract platforms like Ethereum, like Bitcoin, where people will just expect that they can transact with their browser. Um, directly, mm -hmm. and then there's the on ramp, um, which you know the previous the speaker just referred yeah. to. That's a huge challenge. Um, yeah, uh, there's really not a great options right now for for on ramp. Uh, some are great, but in a specific region, don't work in other regions. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Hopefully the reputable. We think that really for a, for a mass adoption, uh, really a 10x or 100x, um, we think earning crypto is really um, uh, you know a fast track to that. That you know buying crypto is still um, you know it's not something that a lot of people are, are comfortable with. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think Bitcoin has a really a strong sense there that. Uh, there's a strong brand associated with it. Like people have, have seen it in newspapers a few times. Like people uh, are much more um, familiar with that term than crypto in general or Ethereum. Yeah. Terms, yeah. So. For sure. No, definitely. No, I think um, generally for the for the kind of non-technical public to really get into the space, it's unlikely they would sacrifice the UX and UI. You know, for all the wonderful things that Web3 provides, the privacy, the security, that's all great. But mm. unless it can catch up with the um, level of UI and UX we have in Web 2, it's unlikely that people will switch over. Which actually it makes me curious. In the crowd we have here today, I'm wondering <coughs> if that's different. Who, um, let's do a little bit of show of hands. Um, who here would sacrifice a little bit of the usability and user friendliness for the benefits that Web 3 provides for the security and the privacy and kind of all that? Um, raise your hands. Who would sacrifice it? Got it. Okay, so actually quite a few. It's a very it's crypto a, crowd. It's a very <laughs> crypto crowd. It's great to see that. I think if we ask that question in any of the other stages, we'll probably have way fewer hands than yeah. um, than in here. Um, so it's interesting to see when that catches up. You know how how the the hands will catch up with that as well. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I'm wondering. So what do you see the kind of so obviously, you know, the Apple News have come out with, um, with the direction that they've showed they're going with, with you know, the crypto kit and the crypto community generally is getting quite happy about it. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you take of it? What's, what's your view kind of what's going to happen with the other browsers? What's yeah. Um, what's um, so there's been a lot of sort of noise um, and s sometimes in inaccurate information about what exactly mm -hmm. crypto kit is. But I think the... The term is very powerful. Like people in CryptoKit, yeah. they assume that Apple is going that direction. And I think they are. Uh, what they've announced lately, I think it's not, it's not really the, the silver bullet. But I think in general, uh, what, what we're starting to see now with HTC, with Samsung, with Apple to some degree, is that you know, crypto wallets, the key, key management, the signature part, will be something that's done at the system level or at mm -hmm. the OEM level, the people making the phones, um, so that native apps can can leverage that functionality without having to build a wallet uh, themselves, which you know no developer wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, that's really a, a distraction that has a lot of, of risk associated to it. So in order for, for native apps that use decentralized networks to appear, I think this the, uh, you know, system uh, functionality will be implemented. And this is what you started to see now with HTC, where they really made an API available for applications mm -hmm. like the browser to, to integrate with so that you can have the best of both worlds as far as convenience and security um, so that apps can invoke the hardware wallet, um, which is disconnected from the OS mm -hmm. and have a secure signing environment so you can have, you're not vulnerable to malware, for example, in a, in a smartphone environment. So I think it's inevitable that OEMs or and OS uh, makers will bake that functionality in. Um, 18 years, two, two years, it's going to be commoditized. For sure, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to yeah. see that. Um, the other question I'm curious, so, you know, in terms of getting to the masses and in terms of driving, so obviously you guys are positioning yourselves as this window where, you know, most of the crypto native people in this room and people who are building stuff can, can use Opera to actually get into the kind of general audience and to mm -hmm. get their products out there. What do you think would be the killer application, kind of, you know, the first, the immediate use case that will help you onboard the kind of this non-technical audience and the kind of the general public um, and then give way to all of the other apps that are mm -hmm. out there? I know you don't like the, 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 the DAFs um, wording, but <laughs> maybe yeah, I think we can call it something. <laughs> the term has to go at some point, but I like to call them web three apps or just web apps in general uh, that use some special APIs and some special backends. Um, you know, I think for um, the, the, what we're going to see first um, is going to be around identity and reputation, uh, so that mm -hmm. you know online communities that are have so far been siloed. Um, like let's say you have a, mm -hmm. a car forum, a watch forum, a a travel forum. Uh, all of these uh, communities could um, you know leverage a wallet by proving ownership of certain assets. So if you have a sneakers community, you can prove that you have a, 
a you sneakers, have a sneakers so, collection at yeah, home. Yeah, so you can show you. off yep. basically <laughs> digital assets uh, or physical assets digitally um, and you know, build a reputation system uh, on top of that. And that's also ties with identity so that people could um, you know, have an alternative uh, that's as painless as Facebook Connect or Google Connect so they can log into sites mm -hmm. using their keys in a browser environment. Um, I also have big hopes for just P2P value transfers with uh, publishers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we all hate paywalls, but you know, someone has to pay for it. <laughs> and they, but they have to create all these obstacles for to get your credit card information and to get your um, your uh, your personal details. But now that you have a browser that has built-in value transfers, you could have a, a very seamless. Uh, you know, micro payment done right there uh, without, without the user even uh, yeah. approving, or like you could have a pre-approved uh, transfer. Um, there's a lot of, of hype around games too, so that you could have you know games that could reuse other uh, game assets. That that mm -hmm. kind of plays also into the online communities uh, that I mentioned. I um, think one yeah. of the early examples when you published the, the Opera um, crypto wallet was uh, Crypto Kitties, wasn't it? In your kind of yeah, it was, it was, it was good marketing material. Uh, yeah. Of course, <laughs> they they they've managed to make a quite appealing visual identity to their products. So that's uh, yep, and it, that's what you you sort of see a lack of in general in the DApp space is that there's few, very few of them have attention to design and really if you want to compete with existing games, uh, existing Web2 players, you really need to, to have Thank a high level, uh, high sure. production value, and you know, CryptoKitties is one of the few teams that have successfully done that. Agreed. Um, They've released their Cheese Wizards recently as well. I don't know if any of you guys have tried it yet. Yeah. It's a pretty, <laughs> pretty cool um, app. I think Max is from our team has been <laughs> spending his time trying it out. Yeah. Um, Great, fantastic. No, it's interesting. Um, anything for next steps on, on, on the roadmap? Anything kind of you guys are you know, thinking so, of? So uh, we're... We're going to have some announcements very shortly um, for uh, for other chains, but uh, we uh, we're adding iOS support uh, mm -hmm. now, so we, we're in still in test flight. But really, we want to be um, um, we want to be known as kind of the Web3 browser or Web3 ready browser on any platform. So we're on <laughs> iOS now, we're on desktop, on the uh, Mac, uh, Windows, and Linux. So yeah, that's that's what's coming. Fantastic. And one concluding question, just your personal um, opinion. Um, you know, if, if you were to think of it, um, will Web3, will crypto create a new habit or shall kind of old and new people who are building stuff in it try to put the UI and UX as convenient as, as, as sort of usual to people as, um, you know, <coughs> everything else is? So it's just kind of if you were to think of Uber, they kind of, they invented a new habit for people to, to get comfortable with, you know, using the location services, using, you know, jumping into a stranger's car. Do you think crypto will create a new habit as well for people or just kind of, you know, get their own UX and UI adapted to the old ones? Um, uh, I think at this point I have to be a bit <laughs> pessimist that we, <laughs> we uh, in, in many cases, we, we just have to assume that users are not going to tolerate uh, changing their habit. I think there, there's room for that if, let's say, um, there was a really massive... Um, kind of data theft problem with uh, tied to identity like at Facebook or at Google where people would actually feel pain or like it would uh, um, you know affect their personal lives then I think that's that's a, a path where you know people could adapt to a, a bit mm -hmm. less user-friendly experience um, but I think in general we just you know if we want this technology to be adopted we we have to compete we have to acknowledge that the competition is is so much easier really and so much more so convenient. Web two yeah, well. Web2 yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it would be exciting to see what, what Facebook announces. Um, whatever they do uh, will have a uh, massive impact on, um, on this yeah, technology. Definitely. Let's see what happens there. Thank you yeah. very much. That was, that was great. Thank, Thank you. you.